Generally, just fucking like dump my eye in. <laughs> let's not do this one, let's do one on the way to the studio. I'm getting all of it, mate. It's, a, it's behind the scenes. Uh, you're not recording this, are you? I am, I'm recording mate, everything. Why are you, come on! <laughs> <laughs> mate, no, I look like a fool. This is Stephen White is at his worst, you know. After the studio. Not yet, I need the toilet. <laughs> Mate, if you swear to God, if that goes online, if that goes online, I am actually gonna slap you. That is actual evidence if that goes online. <laughs> You're gonna piss me off with that camera tonight. <laughs> studio time. Studio time, bro. I don't even know where Tommy lives. You're the uh, driver, where, where are we going? I'm the driver. <laughs> I'm part-time cameraman, apparently. <laughs> excited? Very excited, yeah. Like, uh, finally gonna get track four, five, six done. Yeah, six, I think it's six. Nice. Yeah. So, yeah, on the way back to the studio, to Tommy's house. It should be pretty good. A uh, little bit about the song, so uh, Tommy is moving to America soon now to be with a, a woman that he's failed madly in love with. Basically a premise around that kind of thing. I spoke to him a little bit about it and I thought I'd piece it together. So it should be quite nice. Uh, maybe give you a little sneak preview later or something, but yeah. On my way, my way to go to the studio today. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. So one of the most important meals of the day is the meal that you have just before studio so that we can get our creativity going, you know, get the juices flowing as it were. So you're probably going to get the barbecue bacon stack, what are you getting mate? <laughs> just a coke. <laughs> just a coke for me. Oh is he going to treat me? Is he treating me to something nice? Oh, you shouldn't have. Ah, oh, look at him. Yeah, fucking work if you carry on. <laughs> I mean, thank you so much. No, I was told at the start, because I ordered a Coke, that on the tills, the um, it's not coming through on the tills properly, so he's had to put it down as a mineral water. Oh, I'll give you that yeah, one back. Yeah. Amazing, thank you. It was a large Coke. Yeah, please. Can't get anything fucking right, can they? <laughs> Ever! Ever! Every fucking time! I'm sure they can still hear you, mate. Yeah, maybe, <laughs> baby, but the wind, is, the, the wind is fucking closed, isn't it? Sort your shit out! Nice Amazing, thank, thank you very much. Enjoy. Cheers, thank buddy, thank you. Fucking hell, did he want to lean any further into my window? Welcome to Ryan Hume's How to Drive Not Like a Knobhead. Give us uh, your first three tips of how to not drive like a knobhead, right? If you're gonna fucking turn somewhere, indicate, always. Second one, if you're on a national speed limit road and you're doing anything below 55 miles per hour without a bloody good reason for it, right, you're a fucking knobhead. Third one, don't overtake people in an area of road that you can't overtake people properly on pull in behind a fucking lorry with about an inch worth of space between the other car. Don't, that's, just don't do stupid shit. That's a very like that. specific rule there, but I like it, right? You heard it here first, guys. Ryan Humes, how not to drive like a knobhead. Would you rather have the ability to fly or to teleport? Fly. Uh, well, keep in mind, keep in mind, you get the ability to fly, but you don't get, like, Superman's strength and everything. So, like, need strength. would the human body be able to actually, which, like, you wouldn't be able to fly anywhere, because, like, the altitude, you'd pass out. You wouldn't be able to breathe, because, obviously, you, you know, you stick your head out of a moving car window, and, like, you can't breathe because of the wind blowing into your face. So, imagine that you're flying really fast through the air, you're not going to be able to breathe. You're going to have loads of bugs and stuff hitting your face at, like, 150 miles an hour. Yeah, but... If I was just going to fly at like 30 miles an hour, I'd be alright. Yeah, but then what's the point in flight? Because then it's like, oh, it's still going to take me just as long to get to my destination as it would to Well, no, to because drive. That's, that's only assuming if you're flying based on the coordinates of the road. I mean, obviously it says the I'd crows flying, fly. I'd be flying... Well, the crow flies, yeah. Yeah, I'd be yeah. flying 
over everything. So instead of going from point A and wiggling my way around all the roads to point B, I'd fly over all of the roads and buildings and end up at point B like 10 times quicker. Yeah, but I'll be there like that because I've got to teleport. I think for me, I'd find flying more enjoyable. Yeah, I don't know. Like, logically speaking, like, I mean, look at those birds. They're not really flying too quick. Is the whole point of this just to convince me that what I want out of a superpower isn't right? Yeah. <laughs> I spy with my little eye something beginning with P. P? P. P? Yeah. P? P? P. Something beginning with P. I spy it, right? I've spied it about like four or five times since I started recording this thing. No idea. It's a phone, man. It's my oh, fucking phone. Yes. Okay, my mind instantly went to F then. My bad. What? <laughs> Singer songwriter over here, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Have arrived. So here we are, finally gonna get uh, track finished. There he is. There he is. <laughs> We're recording. Though. Hey, we, we all look like shit, so it's fine. Oh, thanks, man. <laughs> <laughs> I like the comedic That's factor. That's really <laughs> At least take your clothes off. <laughs> <laughs> I got a phone call from a good friend of mine who's uh, who I've known for years and years and years through bands and stuff. And uh, he knew that I was into producing and I was looking to do more than just my own projects. I got a phone call saying, you know, I've got this guy, Stephen, he's, uh, you know, an artist and uh, he's looking to change things up a little bit. And got him to come down to the studio and we recorded a song with another guy who played some guitars. The rest is history, really. You know, it was just uh, straight away. It was a good working relationship. The guy's frustratingly good. Around you sing to get me through. Set. Yeah, I play. Done. Nice. One take wonder. <laughs> that was that was basically it. You know, it was very very simple. You know, we didn't lock eyes from across the room or anything like that. <laughs> in regards to anyone that I've actually worked with on any of my music, and like in any regards, to be honest, Tommy is by far the best producer that I've worked with. He's, uh, he listens to everything that I want to do. It's, it's never about uh, what he wants. Obviously, he'll put his input in. He'll, uh, he'll offer his, uh, his advice as to how the track should be uh, and where we should go with it. And to be honest, his creativity is so fantastic. I normally just let him take free reins of it anyway. The album has been, uh, th there were a couple of songs that were all pretty much already written when we first started and that kind of gave us a base to go from and then I kind of me personally how I work is if if you're working with me then you've got to think of me as the extra member of your band or the extra member of your project because it, being in bands myself being you know a musician for years and years and years you just pick things up along the way and it's the creative, I got, I basically got given free reign. You know, it was sort of weirdly, it's the only time I've ever worked with somebody that can walk in with some lyrics and a melody and all of a sudden I just get ideas in my head. You know, there's a couple of tracks on the album. Uh, one of them in particular where I, I did, I can't even remember how it happened. I think I just heard a couple of words and then I just got some sounds going around in my head and yeah, it's it's weird. The working relationship is weird, but it's good weird. <laughs> so that's a good quality you <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay. I've got like a sticky mouth, but let's try again. Sticky mouth. Stop drinking your own cum then. <laughs> I can't help it. Alright, let's go. Let's go. Love me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna make it seem like you were never gone. Like a young Adam Lavin. <laughs> 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 <clears throat> and now we move on to the next Armani. At your front door. What about your back door? <laughs> <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha
For your boys. <laughs> what is that? It's um, Raymond, Miss Shower. Raymond the Bastard. Alright, here we go. Show of time. I'm dreading this. <laughs> <laughs> he drops the soap on the floor. Oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is really supposed to hang get that low. Like, I know. It's oh dear. Shall <laughs> I tap into a van pick that up? <laughs> He picks it up with his foot. <laughs> well, you would, yeah. yeah. Come on. <laughs> Alright, are you ready? Yeah. Feel alive the moment to hold you close. Just to hold you. Don't do the close. Just hold you, right? Just hold you, yeah. Right, okay. Scunny. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, yeah. <laughs> Feel alive the moment to hold you. Beautiful. And again. Fucking lovely. Lovely. Feel alive the moment to hold you. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Feel alive the moment to hold you. For something that is real. Oh, yeah. I like Beautiful. That, that yeah. sounded good. Cool. Right then. A guy came up uh, with his, I'm going to assume it's, it was his missus. And um, they're like, yeah, right there. Can we order some food? And I was like, yeah, yeah, sound. Anyway, first of all, he goes, hey, can I get a single vodka? I was like, yeah. And he goes, and Coke. I was like, yeah, it's Pepsi. Is that right? Hey. And then his missus goes, hey, a pink gin. And I went, a pint of gin? And she's like, no, a pink gin. And I was like, oh. And then I apologised yeah, and said, yeah. I'm really sorry. I said, yeah, absolutely. Uh, double or single? Single. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> okay, then, cool. And then, oh, what did they have at the end? I think it was like a pint of Guinness um, and a brew dog. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> I sat there and I was like, okay, then, right, yeah, let me just make sure I've got all this right. And he's like, eh, no problem. And I went, literally went like this. So I was like, you want a single a single vodka with uh, Pepsi, yeah? Uh, and then you want a, uh, pink, a single pink gin uh, and then you want a pint of Guinness, and then a, a brew dog. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and you went into Scottish. <laughs> into Scottish, and the guy went, hey. And I was like, okay, bro, I mean, good, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll swim the oceans for you. The album is pretty much just, it, it's a mixed bag of fruit, you know, it's a, it's a mix of different genres, but essentially it's uh, a story of my life, like every one of my songs is, uh, it's a story of, it's, it's basically a tale of like one part of my uh, of my life, and I believe that uh, the album as a whole just kind of gives people a better idea of who I am. Um, you know, I, I find it easier to portray myself uh, via music and uh, with my lyrics and my music than I do, you know, just speaking to the camera, as it were. But, um, yeah, like it's, I'm, I'm really, really excited to finally get this album finished and uh, everyone else should be excited as well because it's, uh, it's really going to showcase everything that I've uh, worked on. Uh, basically, it's, it's just going to showcase where I am, where I finally actually got to in my journey. Uh, all of the hard work is finally paying off, so it should be good. Oh, so I know we're going to get